Okay, I have a mission today. I wanna to find the cheapest drawing tablet setup that I possibly can, but there's one condition. It cannot suck. So I wanna find a PC that is powerful enough to draw all of the creative apps that I wanna use on a daily basis, and also find a drawing tablet that kind of fits the bill, works well enough. Oh, and a third one I'm gonna throw in there, I really wanna draw on a screen. That's kind of important too. And I think I did it. So let's break down the setup that I came up with. Also, my name is Brad, hello. I went looking for PCs that were really cheap. Nowadays, they make these tiny little mini PCs in a box, and I've never really paid much attention to them. My experience with cheap PCs, because I've tested several of them, many of them like Surface clones. I've been trying to find inexpensive Surface clones that are kind of underpowered, and they've been horrible. And so in my head, when I started making this video, I had this idea that I'd find the cheapest mini PC that I could from a reliable retailer. And then I'd find something that was like specced a little bit higher that I could actually recommend. That's where the whole does not suck part come into this. So I went on Amazon and I just started searching for mini PCs and they have a lot of these at different price points. You can find them anywhere between a little over a hundred dollars all the way up to like $800, $900 depending on the processor and the configuration. So the one I ended up settling in on is this one right here. This is the B-Link S12. This thing's only $170. Now it's got an Intel 12th gen uh, N100 processor, which is Intel's like one of their lowest end processors that they make. I thought that might be a problem. This does come with 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can get it a little cheaper with eight gigabytes, but I tell people in all my videos, if you can get 16 gigabytes, you definitely should. It also comes with 500 gigabytes of storage, which I thought, well, that's that's really good for a Windows computer. So the, initially the idea of the video was that I was going to show how this thing was underpowered and could not perform well. And I actually bought a second little mini PC to show these are the specs I would recommend. But here's the thing, when I actually got the testing, I had to throw out my initial video idea. Because believe it or not, for $169, this thing actually works really well for illustration. Since I am building the cheapest setup that I possibly can, the next thing that I needed to find was a drawing tablet. And I ended up settling on this one. I actually knew that I was gonna choose this one right away because this is the XP Pen 10 inch uh, drawing tablet. I tested this one a few years ago when it came out. It's really good. It's got some drawbacks. I'll kind of get into that. But overall, it's it's a solid, decent tablet. The pen is really good. It's considering the price, it's very good. I did also go looking for a Huion that might actually fit that bill too. Huion has a 12 inch version, but that's a little bit more expensive. So I thought, hey, we're going cheap. Let's go with the 10 inch. And currently on Amazon, it's only $135. That is dirt cheap. There was one other thing that I wanted to pick up to kind of make this set complete. And that's just a cheap $30 HP keyboard mouse combo. If you already have a mouse and a keyboard, you could just skip that. So let's tally this up. We have $170 for our PC. We have $135 for our drawing tablet. And lastly, just another $30 for our little keyboard mouse combo. So that brings our grand total up to $335 for this entire setup. I'm, I'm really impressed. So let's break this down. If you wanna find links to the exact PC and tablet that I'm talking about, I'll stick the links down below in the description for you. If you are setting something like this up and you're just getting into digital illustration, you should check out my courses over at bradsartschool.com. One of my courses is called Learn to Draw in 60 days where every day there's a different lesson, there's homework to that lesson, and you follow along and learn a new skill. It's really designed so that you learn the basics so when you jump into more advanced tutorials, you already have a background there. So if you've ever taken a tutorial online or another course and been like, wow, I'm in over my head, this is designed to teach you the basics to prepare you for those harder illustration courses. Anyway, link to that down below in the description. First of all, you have the mini PC. When you pull this thing out of the box, I was really surprised at how small it is. I've used Mac minis before. This actually is quite a bit smaller than a Mac mini. I don't have one to compare it to, but I'd say it's almost half the size. Here's my head for scale. As you probably can guess, it doesn't have the most premium feeling materials. This is just plastic. It's got some rubber feet along the back. In the box, it does include what you need. There's a power cable. It doesn't look all that long, but it's actually long enough for me. There's a really, really short HDMI cable and a slightly longer HDMI cable. There's also this bracket. I guess a lot of people tend to mount these along the back of monitors. Like, 
like if your monitor has a VESA mount, you can actually mount this by using the bracket. Basically turn your monitor into an all-in-one PC. Along the front, you have two USB type A ports. You have the power button. You also have uh, a headphone jack. This has no speaker in it, so you need to attach your own speakers or attach headphones to use this thing, get any audio out of it. Along the sides, you have air intake or outtake, anyway, airflow to kind of cool this thing down. Along the back, you have two USB type A ports, a 2.5 gigabyte ethernet port, two HDMI ports, and your power port. So there's not really a ton of IO along the back, but it is nice that there's two HDMIs, especially for the setup that we're doing. Because the drawing tablet is only 10 inches, that's kind of a smaller screen. If you already have another monitor that you maybe want to use with this setup, you could get a dual monitor thing going on with one of those monitors being your drawing tablet. Now the drawing tablet itself, I unboxed this because it was sitting in, in my closet for the last two years. I haven't really used it too much. Still had the fingerprints on it from the review. This drawing tablet does not come with a lot of stuff. However, it comes with a three in one cable and that will connect it to some PCs, but not all PCs. In our case, it will connect here. This cable actually works perfectly with this setup. So what is a three in one cable? Well, one end of the cable goes into the drawing tablet itself. And then the other end of the cable has three ports. One is an HDMI port, so you can stick it into the HDMI port along the back. And then there's two USB-A cables as well. Those also can go into these. Now, one of those cables is in there for data. So that's like transferring like your pen input into the computer so it can actually work as a drawing tablet. The other uh, USB type A port is actually for power. Because this is plugged in, because this has enough power, your drawing tablet can pull power directly from your PC. So it actually works really well here. If you can't in, in your setup, which often happens with a lot of laptops, you can also plug that USB uh, type A port into like a, a charger or something like that and plug that into the wall and draw power that way too. But that adapter is not included in the box. So I got this thing up and running. I was getting Windows set up. Everything was working just fine with my little setup here. Got my drivers installed, got this thing working well, downloaded some drawing apps. I was playing with Krita, I was playing with Clip Studio. I start drawing in Clip Studio and I'm like, this feels really good. What I really expected to happen was lag and I just wasn't finding it here. So what I've done in videos before is oftentimes like with my Surface Go reviews, a great example. I've reviewed at least two of those, possibly three of those, because the question I was always getting in the comments is people like the idea of getting a Surface Pro, but a Surface Pro starts at $900. You add the keyboard, you add the pen, you're adding a few hundred dollars to the price of the thing. Really expensive. The Surface Go was a cheaper version of that. I think it was like five or $600. Plus then you still had to add the pen and stuff like that. And people love the idea of that form factor, but it was just underpowered. And what you would find is you start drawing with that. And if you drew your lines quickly, you know, some of the lines would start to form, but then the lag would kick in and you'd just you know, it just couldn't think fast enough. It couldn't keep up with your pen. And so you'd start drawing a line and the line would stop or the line wouldn't register. And then you'd pick up your pen and then it would register at like a half a second later. It was really distracting. It wasn't fun to draw on at all. And here that wasn't the case at all. Even as I was importing my really, really large files, it seemed to be holding up pretty darn well. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that I have 16 gigabytes of RAM here. Those old Surface Go's only had like four gigabytes. It's just barely enough to run Windows by itself, let alone a drawing program. Here it is plenty. And even when I had like a whole bunch of stuff open in a web browser and two drawing apps running at the same time, and then maybe I'd even boot up a game, it was still running okay. All of this is to say I was thoroughly impressed with this setup. I was not expecting much and I got a lot more performance than I thought I would. Now, fair warning, if you do this, you are going to be making sacrifices. I don't want to make this sound like a powerhouse. I'm just saying that it exceeded my expectations. 3D rendering, video processing, all those CPU intensive tasks this really isn't built for. Gaming, although I decided to test some gaming just for fun, and again, I was surprised at how well it did. If you wanna play like smaller indie games, I was finding that those actually ran really, really well. This is Sea of Stars. It's like a little throwback to the 16-bit era came out last year. This thing runs super smooth. No problem at all here. Now, I didn't want to go full bore, test 20 different games and see what I could do. That's not really what I was here to do. I just wanted to see how far I could go. Uh, I downloaded Borderlands 2, which I had on Steam, and I was playing that, and it was 
decent. It was probably hovering between 25 and 30 frames on low settings. It was definitely playable. Like when I was running, when I was doing things every so often, I'd see a little lag. I'd see that the dips in uh, the frames per second there, but I would not recommend this if you're going to be playing Minecraft or Fortnite or that sort of thing where you want your frames to be consistent. A lot of people use these little boxes for emulation. So I booted up a little Super Nintendo emulator. I was playing Yoshi's Island on here. And again, that's that's one of the harder Super Nintendo games to emulate. And it emulated it shockingly well. 60 frames, rocking it. It was doing great. Again, I was pleasantly surprised at how this tiny little box was performed. Now the drawing tablet here, as I was drawing, I was using Clip Studio and I was having a really good time with it. I felt that the drawing experience was really, really solid. Even jumping over to Krita, it was doing just as well, kind of what I expect from Krita. I don't like Krita quite as much. I'm a Clip Studio fan, so I kept jumping back to that because it was enjoyable. Now, when I did open uh, my comic book file, which is several thousand pixels by several other thousand pixels, I'll write it on the screen because I can't remember off the top of my head now. I did not expect a file this large to be as smooth as it was, but as I was drawing it, it seemed to be working just fine. And again, I think that has a a lot more to do with how much RAM is in this thing than the processor itself. But still, again, professional level canvas size working really well. So what this is, is it's using laptop components in like a desktop PC. And I'm used to on laptops, especially when I'm gaming or doing anything really processor intensive, is having those fans kick up because they're trying to pull air in to cool off the processor so it could keep going faster. And while I could hear the fan in this, it was really, really quiet. I was surprised at how quiet it was. And just resting my hand on any given part of this thing, I could feel that it was a little bit warm, but it wasn't like blazing hot even when I was playing games. Okay. So the real question here is, is this the cheapest setup that you could get? If you want to leave the Windows Arena, you can actually go cheaper. If you want to beat the price of $335, probably your best option out there is one I talk about all the time, and that is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. It is not the fastest Android tablet. It's a fairly slow Android tablet, but it's good enough, and it's good enough to draw on. And it comes with the pen packed in, and the Samsung Galaxy S Pen is a fantastic pen to draw with. Plus, that's an all-in-one, so if you want to take it with you, still a pretty good option. And if you're just getting into digital art and you're wondering where to start, that's often the place where I recommend you actually do start. The other option is an iPad. The ninth gen iPad is a solid option. It's several years old now, but currently it only costs $200, but you also have to factor in the cost of the Apple Pencil. Now there's two Apple Pencils that work on it. Do not get the USB type C pencil. Instead, get the old first generation Apple Pencil because it has pen pressure, the other one doesn't. That pen does cost $100, so really the package price you're looking at there is $300, which is still $35 less than the setup that I have here. But a lot of people really do want to go the Windows route. The main reason is, again, you have some gaming options there. You can do a lot more with the Windows PC. You lose some of the portability that you get with an Android tablet or an iPad, but you gain all of the functionality of a PC. So originally in this video, my thinking was is this small small, low-end, underpowered PC was gonna suck and I'm gonna be able to use that big suck tag on this video. And then I would say, this is what I would recommend. But honestly, if you're looking for the cheapest thing, this is more than enough. So I have this other mini PC and I'm thinking about doing a second video, something along the lines of, okay, if you don't have much money at all, this will work. But what happens if we take like a little bit of a step up? What if we improve that PC a little bit? What if we improve that drawing tablet a little bit? What are some of the things that you're going to gain? So I think I'm gonna do a part two to this video probably uh, later this month. Actually, this is probably gonna go up at the end of August. So or sometime in September, just to do a follow up to talk about that PC and some other drawing tablet options. So make sure you uh, like and subscribe so you are notified when that comes out. But that is all I have for today. What would you recommend? What downsides or upsides to a PC like this am I not seeing that you see? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.